England have a great chance of winning the World Cup. I think there's a huge amount of power there. I love some of the sort of more left field selections or selections that are considered to be left field. Lewis Ludlam, why not? Why not pick someone who just happens to be in great form five minutes before the World Cup starts with loads of proof that opposition teams will know nothing about. Um, Rory McConaughey, I love that selection. Um, having watched all the Premiership games last season, he was one of the best players in the Premiership. Just outstanding every time he played. Um, hugely competent player. So I love all that. Um, I think that's really exciting and I think that whether it was intended or not, England have ended up going back to what was traditionally the English game, which is, yes, let's get a creative, you know, a decent sort of back line on the front foot with some real aggression, real bulk and power. And I think that's quite good to watch. Yeah, Jack Knoll, Jack Knoll's presence or absence is a big deal because I, you know, don't whatever world class means, I think he's a world class player. So pick the best team in the world and the Welsh claim they were number one for five minutes recently, but they weren't really, we all know that. You can't be number one if you haven't beaten the All Blacks. Um, and they haven't played them, that's why I haven't beaten them. So it's, you know, let's call the All Blacks the best team in the world, um, or the Wallabies, or the Springboks, or England, or Wales, or whomever. Jack Knoll gets in those, if you put Jack Knoll in those teams, he stands out, he could be a standout player. So I don't think he's an automatic selection for England, or necessarily would be in any other team, theoretically. Um, but I do think once he's on there, he's just so good. He's irrepressible, I think, around the field. So I, I do think um, he's an important, fitness worry. I don't think it's mental toughness, I don't, I don't think it's that. It's like when you watch England-Wales at Twickenham in the first World Cup warm-up game, a Wales suddenly lacking mental toughness because they got beaten up by England. They won a Grand Slam half an hour ago, you know, so it's not mental toughness. It's just they're all incredibly tough, these people. Elite rugby players are mentally tough, some tougher than others, but they're all tough. And do you suddenly are you suddenly mentally weak when it doesn't go your way? Sometimes sport doesn't go your way. and. It's like you saw England beat Wales up at Twickenham, dominate them physically, well, suddenly England have got the biggest pack in the world. No, they haven't. Courtney Laws is lighter than Aaron Wainwright. They're not all giants. Lewis Ludlam is not 6, 8 and 20 stone. He's probably, you know, a bag of chips heavier than, you know, Cubby Boy, who's playing, played in, the, you know, playing in Cardiff. So there isn't that much difference between them in reality. A lot of it is the mental state you're in when you play. And also certain things do end up going your way and it's human error rather than mental weakness you know and it's I, I don't think England need to worry about that I think not necessarily mental weakness but I think sort of mental accuracy is tactical and mental accuracy under high stress so sort of 180 plus zones when your heart rate's flying and has been flying for ages and you're knackered and everything's at stake and millions are watching do you make the correct decisions and it's not necessarily just the two on ones or threes on twos it is those it's when you've got 10 seconds to think about it. Are we going to kick for the corner? Are we going to kick for the posts? Are we going to take the scrum? What's the score? What's the ramifications in group terms? If we finish first, second, all that kind of stuff. Who are we likely to play? So actually, do we want to top our group or would we rather come second? Does that affect this decision? So how much information um, can these players retain and process the key players under super, super high stress? That's it. That's, that is partly mental toughness, but also it's kind of a... It's a calmness actually under pressure and I think England will be all right on that front. Wales, I think, I'm English, so I want England to win it. But if England can't win it, I would love Wales to win the World Cup or I'd love Scotland to win it or Ireland to win it. But Wales are favourites of mine because Shanks is my mate, basically. But I love watching those guys play. I, I genuinely found them inspirational to watch during the Six Nations, during their Grand Slam effort but not because they were scoring tries, because they were just physically heroic. They were just monstrous and unbelievably courageous and relentless. I, I loved watching them. It was like, and it was almost emotional watching them, you know, beat England. It was, although I wanted England to win, I thought these guys are just magnificent. I just don't think that's enough to win a World Cup. You know, tackling hard and relentlessly is not enough. You need, a, you need great defence, but we saw in the first warm-up game at Twickenham, it, yes, they might have been a bit leggy from pre-season or a bit rusty, but their defence fell apart. So that they can get that back, but you also need to score a load of tries. And I just they've got loads of wonderful players out wide. I just didn't see the invention and the repeated carving up of opposition defences during the Grand Slam to suggest to me that they're going to go and win a World Cup. I just don't think they are. I would love to be wrong. I really would. I think losing Falatau is mega because he's a worldie. 
Losing Anscombe is mega because I think Bigger's great. Um, I like Reese Patchell actually, but he hasn't quite, you, you, you would, probably wouldn't put him in over Bigger or Anscombe at the moment. But I don't think they lose a huge amount by bringing him in now if they do, but I think Bigger doesn't quite set those players alight or he hasn't traditionally set those players alight. Mind you, uh, Northampton Saints, he's been outstanding in attack. So why can't he? Um, but I do think swapping Bigger in, you might lose a bit in attack, you might not, let's wait and see. But nobody replaces Faletau in Wales for me. I love watching Moriarty play, but no one touches Faletau. So I think that's a big loss. Equally, I think England without Billy Vunapola probably, they, st they stand a significantly smaller chance of winning the World Cup. And I feel the same about Faletau and Wales. So they've got a couple of injuries. Who hasn't? I'm just not sure they got the guys to back up at that level. You wouldn't put your imaginary 20 quid on Scotland winning the World Cup, and nobody would. I just want them to play as well as they can play a couple of times, but as a fan, as a punter. I'm not Scottish, so I've got nothing emotionally invested in it, really. I just love watching Scotland play well when they're playing well. Um, they're such good entertainment. They're brutal to play against because of the speed they play at. But it's the same old thing. Can they dominate physically? Can they put that back line, that back row on the front foot? Can they do it? Um, and I think they might do it through tempo, speed of ball, um, sort of aerobic and anaerobic thrashing of opposition players. But I think once it comes to the static close quarter stuff, they tend to lose out a bit. WP Nell on the tight head is vital for them because he's their platform. He's what gives them the opportunity to actually launch from their toes as opposed to launching from their heels. So I just really would love, as, an, as, a, as a neutral, I'd love to see Scotland just spank a couple of teams and play brilliantly. And, who knows, something magic might happen. And again, even though I'm English, I'd love it if Scotland won the World Cup. Wouldn't it be great? It'd be fantastic. Way more exciting than New Zealand winning it, to be honest. Way more exciting. I think any of the Southern Hemisphere, big Southern Hemisphere sides could win it. I think Australia probably won't. They did a great job against 14 man New Zealand, but struggled the week after. Um, load of wonderful players. I just feel like if they win it, it would be a shock because they've been so mediocre for so long that actually it would be almost a last minute, lastminute.com discovery of form and that feels unlikely. Um, New Zealand have looked infinitely more beatable um, or significantly more beatable in the last year or so. Still reckon they'll win it and South Africa absolutely could win it. So I don't think you can make a top tier rugby superpower, a dark horse. England aren't a dark horse. France aren't a dark horse. You know, these are top teams with highly paid pros that play in top leagues. South Africa could well win it. Um, Australia could win it, don't think they will. New Zealand, everyone's saying they're now not gonna win it. Bet you they do. I'd love Argentina to add something to their you know, I'd, I'd love Argentina to add a, a, a big World Cup scout, you know, to their tally. I'd love them to do something big. I'd love Scotland to take someone apart that they're not meant to take apart. I would love France to deliver. They won't, but I'd, I'd love France to deliver. And I'd love Ireland to rediscover the form of a year ago, which saw them become the world's number one team. Absolutely, they can do it. Same players, loads of prep, great prep, lots of rest. Um, but in terms of what Litland's going to beat a big one, that's the point. It's got to be unexpected, isn't it? So none of us is expecting Japan to be anyone big, but wouldn't it be great, especially in Japan, if they managed it? Uh, I think the All Blacks will win the World Cup. I think they'll win it. Um, I'd love to say something more original, but I'd be lying.